tonight we are going to be talking about three reasons the confident pastor's wife stands by her man in tough times. Now, have you ever been accused of being weak because you stood by your husband during a difficult time, especially when he was wrong? And have you ever been criticized for supporting your husband or supporting the one you love when others thought that you should pack your bags and run the other way? And has your confidence ever been tested when it comes to something perhaps that your husband has done, said, or not done or said? Okay. Remember that confidence is a measure of belief in our own abilities. So when we are talking about the challenges, especially um, standing by our husband when the time is tough, and the time that I'm going to be talking about being tough tonight is when our husbands are wrong. Now, we already know that, that pastors get a bad rap rap oftentimes. Many times if they make a mistake or an error, the world is quick to judge them quick and in a hurry. And many times we have to deal with the fact that the world has decided to judge our husbands. Now, people can make mistakes. Other people can make mistakes and people seem to just go right past it. But when our husbands are wrong, many times people want to broadcast it to the world. Have you ever experienced that where someone, your husband has done something wrong and the, and others want to blast it to the world? Anyway, pastors are under attack and we already know that. Make no mistake, Satan wants to not only ruin your husband, but in doing so, he can also manage to ruin you. He can ruin um, other individuals. He can destroy families. He can destroy churches and Satan can destroy communities, all in an effort as an attack on your husband. So think about it. the throughout the Bible. There, uh, there have been various key influencers in throughout the Bible that made mistakes. And you've seen it on TV. You've seen it on Facebook. Um, you have seen it when a leader falls and a wife stands beside him. All right. So again, tonight we're going to be talking about Three reasons, let me show it to you again. Three reasons the confident pastor's wife stands by her man in tough times. Now, I know that this can be a very sensitive conversation. So I'm going to share a story with you uh, that will help you to, to see the message that I want to bring forth, but it's not going to destroy or hurt anybody's feelings. So my husband, I'm, I'm going to tell you about a time when he was just straight up wrong, okay? So we had gone to, to St. Louis for a wedding. He was doing his best friend's wedding. And it happened to be that the wedding was on a Sunday. So off we went to St. Louis, got up Sunday morning. Hubby called to check and see if anybody was at the church. Now, keep in mind, this is before uh, we really had anything live on, on YouTube or anything live to where he could actually know what was going on. Anyway, he called the church and nobody answered. And so he got stressed out about it. But I was like, it is what it is, babe. You're not there. So it's going to have to do what it does. Right. So we went on through the day because it was Sunday. We had some free time. I was most excited about that. And we had gone shopping. Imagine that pastor and wife going shopping on a Sunday. But yeah, we did it. So as we were at the store, um, it was, it, we looked at our watches and it was time for the store to close. And we said, okay, we'll, we'll just maybe come back um, tomorrow because we'll be here till Monday. And they said, no problem, no problem. Take all the time you need. We're going to stay open. Um, and we're like, oh, they're staying open for us. Okay. So then we proceed to get on to the wedding because it was a Sunday evening wedding. We got to the wedding and we were sitting there waiting and hubby was back there taking care of business because, you know, he was in charge and he came out to me and said, babe, I am concerned. I'm like, yeah, what's going on? He says, well, the bride's not here yet. Uh, the, the, the husband is, I mean, the, the groom is walking around like nothing's wrong and, and he's not stressed at all. He said, there is something seriously wrong going on here, Janice. And so I was like, well, you know, we're here to do a job and you're going to do it. So whenever it starts, we'll be just fine. 
Then the wedding was over, it happened, and nobody seemed stressed out. And then we got to the reception. So when we got to the reception, it was like, oh boy, my husband said, this is getting kind of late and we do have a drive tomorrow. So we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and go. So most people were like, okay, you know, I understand the pastor doesn't want to always stay for all the, the, the loud party stuff that happens. So it was okay. We got in the car. Hobie says, oh my gosh, this is the Chiefs are still on. And um, in fact, they just started. Wow. He said, this is really strange. He said, but you know what? Maybe the Chiefs waited on me to leave their reception. Now imagine the nerve. He thinks the Chiefs are going to wait for him. Anyway, the next morning we got up, uh, ready to go back to Kansas City, and we slept in because we don't often get to do that. And I called the office and asked if we could have a late checkout. They said, sure, take all the time you need. You have plenty of time. So I was like, wow, that is nice. Well, let me tell you the, the real truth, everybody. We did not know that the time had changed and we had literally gone through the entire, the entire weekend all the way till Monday afternoon before we figured out the time was wrong. So when I, when I look back at that, I didn't really care about the time. I didn't know what was going on, but hubby knew and found out that he was just dead wrong. He was wrong believing that everything was revolving around the fact that that he um he thought he knew what he was talking about but he was wrong and imagine all the stuff that it could have happened as a result of that now, that's a funny story that we still laugh about today because of course the time changed today but let me tell you what i got out of this as far as the three reasons why um by competent wives, competent pastors' wives stand by their man even in the midst of trouble. Okay, so let's go, let's get right into that. Yes, the time change, it was a time change, just a hilarious story. Anyway, so let's start getting into the reasons why uh, that a let's see, look, I lost my little stuff. I thought I was doing something. Okay, so let's get into the three reasons. Uh, that a confident pastor's wife stands by her man. So the very first reason I want to share with you is because she has learned to let God fix it. Now, whether right or wrong, there are times when our husbands are going to be wrong. And as a result of that, it's going to have some kind of lashback. Again, whether people are judging them or what is going on, there is no amount of guilting that you can try to put on him. There is no amount of, of anything that you can say to fix it, okay? Now think about men in the Bible who have fallen, who have failed. Remember what happened with David. It took, it took God to send Nathan to help him to see himself, right? We also know that, that when... When Esther was faced with the situation where her husband had made a mistake, it took it took God to work the whole situation out. It took God to fix it. And so we have to realize, first of all, is that we have to have that confidence knowing that God is the one that can fix it. And he's the only one that can fix it. He's the only one that can fix our husband's heart. And again, there's no amount of punishment that we can do that can ever match what God does, whether it's us trying to attempt to punish our husband or even if it is the world who is lashing out at him because of perhaps him being wrong or doing something wrong. Now, again, I am I am not referring to things that can cause harm to you uh, physically or or things that um, can can put you at a point where your own well-being and life is at risk. But again, God is the only one that can fix it. Again, remember what happened with 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 David. Remember what happened with Nabal. Right? God is the only one that can change the hearts of our husbands. Okay. So knowing that. God is the only one that can fix it, helps you to be confident and not all stressed out. And again, I'm not saying that you won't be stressed, but knowing that God will fix it gives you that confidence. All right. So let's go on to the reason number two. And reason number two is 
she can be confident because she knows they are in it together. Now, right or wrong, again, whenever our husbands are faced with a situation where they have been, um, it's proved that they perhaps have done something wrong or are in the wrong, then we're still in it together. Despite Despite me not caring about what time the wedding start and all of that, we were in it together. And whatever happens to him also happens to you as well. It also, it affects your family. It affects you. So you're in this together. Remember the vows that we took that we would, we would love and support him in sickness and in health. I'm sure most of you, especially if you're old school like me and you're a seasoned pastor's wife, you took the vows that you were going to stand with him through thick and thin, through sickness and in health. And sometimes when sin gets in our husband's hearts, it is a form of sickness. So we are all in this together. So the confident woman knows that they're in this together and whatever happens with him also happens with you as well. All right. So how do you all feel about that? Give me some comments if, if you see things differently. But again, when we make the vow that we are married, we are all in this together. Now, finally, reason number three is that she believes Romans 8, 28. Now, you all know that I'm always coming back to Romans 28 because what that clearly says is that all things are going to work together for good because they love God and they are called according to his purposes. And again, when you believe Romans 8 and 28, you don't fret about the small stuff. You don't necessarily even fret about the large stuff because you know that ultimately in the end, it is all going to work out for your good because you have been chosen. He has been chosen. It worked out for Esther. It worked out for Sarah. Remember, we talked about Sarah last week, how she decided to do things on her own and she and her husband were wrong. But but she it all worked out together for her good. Well, remember what happened to Bathsheba? Despite the fact that David decided that he just had to have her, it all worked out for her good in the end because she was she had her wonderful son, Solomon, who became king as well. So what do you all think about this? Can you see how being a competent pastor's wife, you will be able to deal with the tough times, especially when your husband is wrong. But you can only stand by him, again, when you are confident in the things that we have talked about, the fact that you learn to let God fix it, you know that you are in this together, and you know and believe Romans 8 and 28. So, if you want to know more about what it is to be chosen, having that confidence, having that clarity, I say every time I come out here, I equip seasoned pastor's wives to have the clarity, the confidence, and the courage to walk boldly into the destiny for which she was chosen by being perfectly who God created her to be. Again, in a world where people are quick to judge our husbands because of their mistakes or because they, are, they have been wrong, it takes a confident woman to stand by his side. And the only way that you can have that confidence is to clearly know that you have been chosen. This month, we're going to be focusing on confidence. We're going to uh, talk about something related to confidence every week. We started out last week about having the right type of confidence. We talked about this week about how to be confident, even in those tough times. And soon we are going to be doing a confidence assessment. So stay tuned for that. Now let me hear from um, you all. And let me see, we have been talking about once again, three reasons the confident pastor's wife stands by her man in tough times. So let's...